Welcome to Electra Online and now we're going to take a look at the density of a different kind of packing. In this case we're going to look at what we call face centered cubic packing. What that means is that on each face of the cube there's an atom embedded right in there in the face so that it pushes the four atoms of the corner out somewhat. So we still have the four atoms of each of the corners but now because we embed an atom, an atom in each of the faces, one in the bottom, one at the top, one to the left, one to the right, one in the front, one in the back. So a total of six faces with six atoms embedded within it so that it pushes all the quarter atoms a little bit further to the right. Another way of looking at it, let's say that this is one of the sides and we're looking at a cross-sectional view, half the atom on each of the sides will be inside the cube and half the atom will be outside the cube. So of the six atoms that are positioned right on the, each of the six faces of the cube, half of them sticks inside and half of them sticks outside the cube. So now we have to figure out the ratio of the volume of atoms in the cube divided by the volume of the cube. Of course, the volume of the cube is still a cube. The side length is a, but we don't know what a is. We have to figure that out first. Well, think about it. On each of the faces, we have an atom embedded right in there. So it sticks at the very same level, uh, depth-wise, from our perspective, depth-wise, so that the diagonal across one of the faces, which is equal to the square root of 2 times the side A, is equal to 4 times the radius of an atom. Again, 4 times means 1 R there, 2, 3, and 4 R. So across one face, remember in the previous video, we had to go diagonally through the cube from the front corner here to the back corner on the other side, but we don't do that here. Here the atoms are situated in such a way we can simply go across the diagonal of a face of the cube. And therefore, in this case, it's going to be the square root of 2 times a. a is the side. The square root of 2 is simply the diagonal across the side is equal to 4 times the radius, 1, 2, 3, 4 of the atoms. So now, we also have to decide how many atoms we have in one of these cubes, the way that it's packed. Well, we still have one-eighth of an atom of each of the corners belonging to the cube. The other seven-eighths belong to the seven other cubes that would be around each corner. So, that would be uh, eight times. Eight times one-eighth of an atom belonging to the corners. And now we have six atoms in each of the six faces, and half of each atom is in the cube. So it would be plus six times a half an atom. So it would be 1 plus 3 would be a total of 4 atoms, in this case, would be inside the cube. So the volume of the atoms is going to be 4 times the volume of the single sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we divide that by the volume of the cube, which is a cube like that. Now, of course, we have to convert from a cube to r or from r to a, whichever way you'd like to go. Let's do it this, in this way. Let's solve for a and plug it in the denominator. So we have a is equal to 4r divided by the square root of 2 and plug it in for a in the denominator. So let's try that. So this is equal to 4 times 4, we can write 16 pi r cubed divided by, let's take this 3 and put it in the denominator, and then we have this number right here, which is the quantity 4r divided by the square root of 2 quantity cubed. All right, let's simplify that. So this is equal to 16 pi r cubed divided by 3 times 4 cubed is 64. And then we have r cubed in the denominator. And now we have the square root of 2 cubed. That would be 2 times the square root of 2. But since, in the, since it is in the denominator of the denominator, we can move it to the numerator and write this as 2 times the square root of 2. That is the square root of 2 quantity cubed. All right. We get a little closer here. We have r cubed divided by r cubed. That cancels out. We have 16 divided by 64. That becomes a 1. That becomes a 4. And we have a 2 and a 4. That becomes a 1 and that becomes a 2. All right. It's kind of a mess now. So let's pull out what we have left. This is equal to, we still have a pi left. And we still have the square root of 2 left. So it would be pi times the square root of 2. In the denominator, we still have a 2 and a 3 left. That would be 6. So it would be the square root of 2 pi divided by 6. I think I've got everything I needed there. To... Yes, let's try that. Let's see what that's equal to. So we have 2, take the square root of 2 uh, times pi and divide that by 6 and we get 74%. Again, that's more than we had before. When we only had atoms at each corner, 
the volume density of the atoms was 52%. When we had a body centered, one atom completely in the middle and eight at the corner, we were up to 68% of the volume of each cube was occupied by the atoms. But in the case of the body centered, we have a density of 74%. 74% of the space in the crystalline structure is completely occupied by atoms, which leaves about 26% of little voids in between the atoms that cannot be filled because you know, the, the uh, shells, the electron shells, will be pushing against each other. You can't get them any closer than that. So that's how you figure out the density of the atoms in a unit structure for, in this case, the face center cube. And if you want to see the other cubes, the body center, that's the previous video, and simply the simple structure, the simple cube with only atoms at the corner, you see the video before that. So that's how you calculate the density of atoms in a crystalline structure.